So the next speaker we have coming up is uh, Pierre Bougie, and uh, super excited about having him join us as well today, a uh, competitor, if you will, <laughs> but definitely offering a fantastic tool in the open source space. We're super excited to have Pierre here today. Uh, Pierre, can you come join the stage? Give it a moment here. Here we go. Hey, Pierre, how's it going? Hey, very good, and you? Doing good. It's great to see you today. You feeling ready? Yes, ready. All right. Well, I'm going to actually uh, let you introduce yourself because <laughs> I'm assuming you've got a slide for that or something covered. Uh, but let's go ahead and just get started and let you uh, dive right in. If you can dismiss the little bar there, great. And uh, awesome. Here, okay. Here yeah. Thanks a lot for the thanks a lot for the, for the introduction. Um, so I'm here. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Strapi, which is the leading open source uh, headless CMS. I've been a developer. I use a lot of APIs, and I especially use a lot of traditional CMSs because I worked a lot as a co-founder, as a freelance developer, freelance developer with my two co-founders. So we used a lot of traditional CMSs, but when we had to do a mobile application or a website using modern technologies, there was one thing missing. And this thing was actually an API. So that's the very um, goal of this, uh, of this talk, uh, is to explain how APIs can actually unleash the power of content. So first of all, I think it's important to remind what is content. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, content is everything that is included into something, um, within something. So uh, if you're talking about your house, uh, the content of your house would be typically a TV, some beds, some chairs, etc., cetera, et cetera. But when we are talking about content in a digital uh, context, um, so if we talk about a website, for example, the content will typically be the logo, uh, some images, the text, uh, and even the content of the buttons on the website. So it's really the same on a mobile application. Um, so content is basically everything you can see within a digital experience. To manage all of these contents, you need something, uh, a tool which is actually hidden behind the website. Um, and this kind of tool is called a content management system. Content management systems um, have been invented in the 90s, so something which is not new. Um, and this kind of tool is extremely helpful because if you're building a blog, for example, you need a place where you're going to write your blog posts. And this is exactly uh, when you're going to uh, need a CMS. So you're going to write your blog posts in the CMS, and automatically they're going to be displayed in your website. So that's something quite simple. Um, it has been around for a while, uh, and it's really the thing behind your website. So traditional CMSs include two things. The first one is an admin panel. So that's really the interface where you're going to write your content, where you're going to update the text, the images, and so on and so on. And the CMS traditional, a traditional CMS also includes a front end which is a tool, a very helpful tool, which is going to generate web pages. And these web pages are going to be sent directly to the web browser. So it's very handy because it saves you a lot of time. It builds the entire website for you, but it creates an anti-pattern because a CMS should be only focused on managing content, not on the display. But because traditional CMSs were mm -hmm. used only for managing websites, um, managing content on websites, just because there was no other platform, it was great. But now the content is also to be displayed in mobile applications, even IoT, like smartwatches, for example, but it can also be other services, displays, TVs, and so on and so on. So the content has to be displayed everywhere. But all of these new devices cannot con connect to a traditional CMS, because a traditional CMS, by default, sends a web page. And even the way to create a website will be changed over the past few years. Developers want to use modern front-end frameworks, such as React, Vue.js, Angular, Gatsby, and all of these technologies are designed to be connected to APIs. So 
none of these technologies are able to be used with traditional CMSs. So for all of these reasons, a new kind of CMS appeared in the past few years. And this CMS is named the headless CMS. It's named headless without a head because there is no front end anymore. So a headless CMS still includes an admin panel because uh, CMSs are really about managing content. So you still need a place where you're going to update the text, write your blog posts, and so on. But instead of having a front end, you now, you now have an API. And this API makes the content available to any of this platform. So that's pretty much it. APIs unleash the power of content by making it available to any platform. But that, that's not all. Because a headless CMS is really at the heart of an entire ecosystem, of an entire digital experience. The headless CMS will eventually be connected to databases like SQLite, Postgres, but even Google Sheets or Airtable, for example. You're using a headless CMS, but maybe you want to, to update and to, to upload your assets to an asset management system like Cloudinary, for example. And that's only possible using APIs. You're managing content, but eventually you want it to be synchronized with a search engine like Algolia, Elasticsearch, or maybe Search, for example. You need APIs for this. Lots, about 20% of use cases is in, uh, in headless CMS uh, use cases are e-commerce uh, websites or application. So you will eventually keep using Shopify or Magento to manage your products, like the price, the description, the pictures, etc. But if you're on your own page, for example, you have a slider. You have a slider listing maybe five products. How can you determine what products are going to be displayed in this slider? You need something else than Shopify or Magento. And this something else is actually a headless CMS. And the headless CMS must be connected to all of these tools. So that way, inside the CMS, inside the admin panel, you will be able to select your products, which are actually stored in Shopify. And the headless CMS is going to store only the product ID. And also about e-commerce, maybe you will want to store uh, your products inside the, the headless CMS. So you, you really use it as a product management tool um, to, to list uh, your products. But you will keep using Shopify only for the payment, only for the shipping, and all of these features. And as for um, other integrations, um, you can connect a headless CMS to Stripe if you want to, if you need to, to make payments, uh, to something like SendGrid if you need to send emails something to like phrase if you need to translate your content on the fly. So APIs are extremely important in this market to connect um, the CMS with all of the services. By default, a headless CMS is connected by a front-end, which is typically powered by React, Vue.js, or any other front-end framework or mobile technology. But imagine a world where from the design phase uh, in, the, in, the, in the construction of a website, you can work with real content. Like imagine the designers um, pushing or getting uh, the content within their own tools like Sketch or Figma. Imagine that they build the entire interface with the right content, and this content is synchronized with the Hella CMS. When the developers will start building the website using the design that had been built previously, they will work with real content. So that's going to save them a lot of time. And headless CMSs will be in the future in, in connected with no-code solutions as well, such as Webflow, for example. So that way, you won't even need to you won't need you won't even need developers to use headless CMSs. And maybe you won't even know that you're actually managing uh, content through the headless CMS just because it would be connected to lots of other tools. And in this world, GraphQL is extremely important because GraphQL can really be at the very center of all of this ecosystem. So first of all, GraphQL helps you getting all of the content within one single request. So you don't have to make lots of different requests to get the content. And when you're building a website or application, 
most of the time you have very deep relations. Like uh, if you're building a blog, for example, uh, every blog post may be related to a category that has a name. And even this category is uh, connected to also posts. So, you know, you will need very deep relations. So it's really helpful to be able to do this within one single request. Obviously, as you know, it offers much better performances because you will, first of all, make only one request, but you get only the content you need, no more, no less. And GraphQL is also extremely impor important to aggregate data because I explained how a headless CMS can be connected to an entire ecosystem. But imagine that from the CMS, you request, obviously, the content that is managed inside the CMS, like the tagline on the home page, the cover image, so you want the URL, which is eventually from Cloudinary, for example. And then you have a slider displaying the five images I talked about. In each slide, you will get specific information about the product, and this product will eventually come from Shopify. So you get the content from the headless CMS, so you get the URL of each slide, but you get you also get in real time the information from an external tool. And GraphQL is extremely powerful to do this. So API is definitely a relationship power of content, that's for sure. It's also only the beginning, like you know, in the future, uh, content will also be about voice, it will also be about artificial intelligence and new use cases that we didn't invent it yet. So that's really what uh, APIs are about in this new content world. So that's, uh, that's it for today, and I'm happy to answer all of your questions. So oh, great talk. Uh, one that I have very near and dear to my heart as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just uh, for any any person who's ever built with uh, with traditional CMSs, they know what an amazing change the head of the CMS paradigm brings to the development workflow. I'm just checking here onto our questions. So if anybody in the chat here has any questions, feel free to ask them now. I'll keep my eye on it. Um, how have you seen, was you, have you been kind of uh, having customers come to you and, and different developers over the last year or two years now, how have you been seeing the GraphQL space sort of taking off in the, the content space? Yeah, I think it's definitely growing. GraphQL in general is growing, and we can definitely see it in the uh, content management space. Um, I think uh, it will take time. It will take time to uh, be one hundred percent GraphQL, um, and I think it will always have room for rest uh, because it, it takes time. But we definitely see that the um, most modern companies, I would say, um, are going with uh, with GraphQL, and it's something which is just extremely important. And if you take a look at all of the CMSs, uh, both headless and traditional, they now all offer a GraphQL API. Um, some are, uh, there are not, uh, all really good, some are better than others, but it definitely proved that it's something which is um, essential now uh, in, the, in the CMS landscape. As, as for the aggregation I talked about, it's something uh, which is like really, really new, and uh, I'm sure it will uh, really happen in the future. Uh, I think as uh, a CMS, and I'm not talking about us only, but uh, as uh, every CMS, uh, I think it will be our responsibility to educate also this market about GraphQL and why it is so important. I was talking about the nested relations uh, in, a, in, a, in CMS use cases, most of the time you have really, really deep relations between all of the different uh, content types. Um, so it makes even more sense um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in this use cases. Like if you're building an authentication system or an analytics system, you don't necessarily need GraphQL, but uh, I think it's really, really helpful for, um, for content management. 
And especially because most of the time, the clients, which can be a website or a mobile application, will pull the content. And this is especially uh, where GraphQL is really not. Yeah, I think what we've, what we've seen as well is that there's a, a tight coupling oftentimes that GraphQL provides for mapping the, the content to your API very descriptively. So you're not having to work with a traditional paradigm that the CMS is maybe bringing and, and forcing you to say, we're going to use pages or we're going to use tags and you have to sort of, you know, hack around the corners, but you can really say, no, I've got cars and base stations and phones as content models. And it's a lot easier to define that in GraphQL and it, and it maps to your content schema um, just very, very closely. That's, yeah, that's, um, if, if you're not using a headless CMS for the people watching this, you're, you're really missing <laughs> um, the, the biggest thing. Uh, we have a, f a few minutes left here. And uh, since there's no questions yet, um, have you seen this as well? So I'm curious. So since, since we're in really the, the same space here, have you seen that basically with a headless CMS, um, and especially even one with GraphQL, people just start to really challenge a lot more what a, what kind of a website they want to power with the CMS because before it was a kind of more just brochureware a little bit and now it's like people are trying to build almost full scale apps uh, using a headless CMS in the back and have you seen a similar pattern or yeah we've definitely seen this um, especially because um, as Stripe is really in our DNA like the name Stripe comes from Bootstrap your API so in the past it really was a framework to build APIs. And then we decided to went Stripe as a headless CMS. But we really have all of these customization capabilities. And let's think this to, to do any advertising. But we we have seen this actually from the beginning for us. And we try to go more uh, on the content management side. Uh, but that's definitely something which is true in this market, is that um, content, uh, headless CMSs can provide both an API and a, and a dashboard to, to see the contents which could be content or data, I would say. Um, so yeah, it's definitely helpful to, be, to, build a, to build a complex apps. We have one question, and it's actually a really good one, <laughs> uh, from Philippe Hammerstadt. Uh, so he's saying that, uh, are there any CMS use cases you would not recommend a headless CMS over traditional CMS? Good question, Philip. That's a good one. Um, Yes, maybe if I, yeah. Um, if you don't feel you need a headless CMS, um, if you're building a very simple website, like for, a, I don't know, for, 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 the, for, for a bakery or you know, something which doesn't require custom development, then stick with a simple WordPress, pick a template and go with it. Uh, you will have much less complexity uh, and you will be up and running within a, a few minutes. If you use a headless CMS, most of the time, it means that you want to build a, front, a custom front end, uh, which you're going to develop. So it involves uh, a developer team. Uh, it will cost more money, but it will give you 100% flexibility. So that's really what headless CMSs are about. My bet on this is that Using headless CMSs will be much easier in the future. Uh, you will have templates for any uh, available headless CMS, and you will be using headless CMSs, but you won't even be aware of this. Uh, but that's something which will happen in the future. For the moment, headless CMSs are for custom use cases. It's uh, quite complex, but that's the price of flexibility to use them. Uh, so in the future, I think you, you, you will be able to, to use them for everything. Yeah, so he followed up with another question. Uh, and he says, I'm thinking when you don't want to write your own admin edit pages, for example. So I would think that potentially is a bit of a misconception here, right? Because that's not the fact with a traditional head of CMS. Uh, when we're saying traditional, uh, we're meaning the coupling of a templating language with, uh, with the back end admin. A headless typically will will bring an admin interface to the party and and strappy is is the same correct yeah correct 
yeah, so so that is the case is you do get the same admin interface. Now, what's nice when you have such a, a strong API embracing tool uh, like Strapi, even also like GraphCMS, but like Strapi in this case, um, you you have the mutation abilities, you have the writing abilities, so you can actually use the, the APIs exclusive. Uh, you don't have to use the admin interface, but that, that uh, breakout actually is there and is available to work with. And, uh, yeah. I would say that there's not a use case that you don't uh, wouldn't use a head of CMS for, uh, but that's mostly because if you're building something or building a project, I have a, a strong tendency to advocate for builder maker culture. And so I would say if you are a bakery and you're wanting to just throw something online quickly or whatever, still get your local dev to, uh, put together a quick page. And it's not a huge effort to stand up a small content model in a thin website in one day or a couple of days and be able to have that sort of cottage industry support. I mean, sort of like uh, support your local butcher kind of thing. But <laughs> um, but no, I'd, I'd say um, I understand what you're meaning. And there are cases where you potentially still, there may be some, some restrictions in place, but uh, a headless will do anything that a, a traditional will do. So definitely check it out. And if you're looking for uh, open source CMS, uh, like that's a requirement as well. Uh, Strapi is a fantastic option to like just narrow down your <laughs> narrow down your choices to. Um, but uh, fantastic. All right. Yeah, they would run for graphics. <laughs> <laughs> we like we like it, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, uh, headless CMS really great having uh, other players in the space. As as we would both attest, you need to have uh, a healthy ecosystem of choice and opportunities uh, to see really the industry embrace this uh, pattern. And so, the more players we have promoting headless concepts and architectural patterns, uh, the more everybody's going to win. So. We're excited about that. All right, Pierre, I'm going to bring on the uh, next uh, the next 